Tyler, thank you for giving me some minutes in this crazy time that it is today. Absolutely. No um, I wanted to, uh, everybody loves a good comeback story and an underdog story, and I wanted you to give us a glimpse into yours. Um, just reading number one draft pick, uh, first round draft pick in 09 with the Rockies, mm -hmm. um, few years in the minor league system. Uh, 2014, you make your debut, and then you break into the rotation in 15. Yeah, 2014, 2014, I was in the rotation, and then 2015, I was also in the, in the rotation. Okay, and then uh, from 15 to 19, talk to me about that journey. Yeah, so in 2015, um, in spring training, I got the yips. That's as simple as it is. I got the yips, uh, got down to a point where I couldn't play catch to somebody standing 10 feet away from me. Um, you know, it... I was able to go out there and just compete. You know, there was one game against San Francisco when I was starting. I threw 75% change-ups because it was the only pitch I could throw over the plate. And, um, you know, I ended up winning that game, but that wasn't a sustainable, a sustainable uh, way to pitch in the big leagues. So 2015, got sent down. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be a quick thing, month, two months, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, that's not the way it went. 2015, I stayed in the minor leagues, went all the way down to rookie ball. Eventually went home, actually. Just wasn't even able to play in rookie ball. Went home, they just said, you know, take a mental break, just take some time off. Uh, 2016 starts up. I spent some time and extended, uh, went to double A, single A, double A, didn't really pitch well. They kind of used me like once, a, once every two weeks, just kind of keep me on a team. Uh, and then at the end of 16, they released me. This would be in the Rockies. Um, 2017, the White Sox picked me up for spring training. Uh, they released me out of spring training. I didn't play at all in 2017. Me, to be the first rounder, I thought, you know, somebody's going to pick me up. They've got to have some spot. Someone's going to give me a try. And that was kind of a slap in the face that said, like, you need to figure it out. Like, it's your opportunities are running out. You're not going to play this year. You didn't play this year. Figure it out. Um, so I really just got to work. Um, and I told myself, I don't want to look back when I'm 50, 60, 70 years old, having not tried everything. So I started trying everything that I possibly could. And for me, it was just the simple things. I started playing catch five feet away and if I could play catch for five feet, make a hundred throws at five feet. Then we moved back to seven feet, 10 feet, 12 feet and just slowly keep working our way back. It wasn't pretty. There was balls all over the place sometimes, right. but uh, that's the way it was. So that's what I did all during 2017 summer when I wasn't playing. 2018, I uh, got picked up by the Mariners for spring training, released out of there. And at this time I was throwing somewhat decent, right? I could throw it low 90s, kind of in the zone, uh, but it wasn't, wasn't special. Um, so after that, I uh, got released out of spring training by them and went and played ind independent ball. And I made a deal with a guy, he's the GM there, his name's Billy Martin. I said, Billy, it's going to be ugly at some points, but I, want, I need a guarantee from you that you will give me one full season to play. And he said, all right, you have my word. And for the first month, I was terrible. I was lobbing the ball in there at like 82, 83 miles an hour at some points, topping out at like 89, just not doing well. But he, he, stuck, to, he stuck to his word. And uh, by the end of that year, I was actually you know, throwing 93, 94, 95 as a starter. And he's like, oh, honestly, you, if it wasn't for you know, my word saying that and us that having that deal, you would have been released a long time ago. So I'm extremely fortunate for when you know, he stuck to his word and he gave me that opportunity. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. Right. Um, 2019 spring training, I uh, went with the uh, Diamondbacks. Yeah. Pitching fine there. They had me in a relief role. Uh, pitched for two months in double A, or about a month and a half, two months. And then uh, eventually uh, they released me as well. Went back to Indy Ball. Uh, one pitching coach there, my pitching coach at the, the Airhawks, the same independent ball team for 2018. He made one mechanical adjustment with me. He said, when you were good, it looked like you got your arm up a little bit quicker 
than you are now. Okay, so I got yep. I started doing that. And within one week, the velo went up, the accuracy went up, everything fixed itself. And from that point on, it's I've been feeling great. And uh, you know, I don't know what brave scout came out and saw me, um, but I was out in the middle of nowhere and playing in front of no fans in the uh, American Association League. They found me, and um, you know, I'm just fortunate for the opportunity that somebody somebody's given me. Do you think that it was actually the mechanical thing? Or a lot of the times when I'm talking to the younger guys, you know, a lot of the, what I say, it may not be the is actual issue, but it's just something that they can put their mind on and maybe use that and, and something clicks and then off they go. Do you think that's was the case? Or do you think you actually just decided, it was just, okay, I've cured myself? I think, you know, it was my, the mental stuff slowly fixed itself from 2000 and. 17 till 2019 but i'd gotten in such a bad mechanical place just trying to survive that it wasn't the same um you know electric stuff that i'd had in the past and then you know the mental side had just slowly gotten better and then that one physical adjustment just put it it was the icing on the cake that just that finished the deal were you going all out was it your physical were you going at 100 percent when you were Loving it in at 80, 83, 84, 85, or were you just I trying wasn't. to get it? I was just trying to throw a strike at that point. You know, I wanted it to not go to the backstop. And I figured if I can get it enough times where it's not going to the backstop, we can slowly start increasing the velocity. And, um, you know, that's kind of what I did. And, you know, I eventually got comfortable enough with a hitter in the box and an umpire and a catcher and, you know, the stands and stuff where the anxiety started to, to fall back, fall down and my ability would come out. And, um, you know, then the velo started coming up, but again, the mechanics were still not a hundred percent, uh, you know, and I wasn't able to throw quite as hard. And then just that subtle adjustment mechanically, you know, really freaked me up. Fast forward to this year. Um, how did, how did the Braves tell you that you were going to be on the roster? On the roster? They, um, yeah. It's a weird time. I got a I got a phone call and they said, "Hey, pack your bag. You're getting on the flight tomorrow." And I was like, "All right, this is awesome. <laughs> Sounds good." Um, so yeah, it's just it's a weird thing. You know, part of these times, you know, most often they bring you in the office and kind of say that to you, but uh, right. you know, they try and limit the number of meetings we have and the number of people we come in contact with. And um, that's how that's how it went down. Who was the first phone call after? Um, it was my agent. First one, yeah. He uh, he saw me back in 2017 when I was like just starting, like, you know, I'm gonna figure this journey out. Um, I switched agencies. He was the first one that kind of was like, dude, I think you can do it. And um, he's been by my side this entire time. He's never told me, you know, maybe it's time to give it up or even, you know, every time I call him, he's there. And he's been, uh, he's been by my side the entire time. Couldn't ask for a better agent. That is fantastic. That is really good. I love hearing that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. Talk me through your outing the other day. Uh, you know, it's been so long. Uh, obviously, you've been there, you've done it before, but you get out on a big league mound again. Um, you know, what, what's going through your head? What like, You've obviously gone through months of being out to, to get through games and get through spring training games and get through bullpens. And, and is there anything in the back of your mind that thinks, okay, what's going to happen? Or are you just, at that point, you say, let's just, whatever happens, happens. Let's go. It's, it's trusting it. And, um, you know, I want to go out there and be aggressive. That's my biggest thing is if I know that I have that aggressive mindset, it's going to, it's going to fix any other issue that I have out there. If I can go out there and just be aggressive, attack the zone, only good things can happen. And so that's what I was doing. I go, I throw my bullpen, get a couple where I just feel good. And then it's all right. Compete mode. It's time to trust it. Such a good story. Have you had a chance to speak to Daniel Bard at all? Uh, I've talked to Daniel a little bit um, when he first made the roster, and then uh, he texted me as well when it first came out that I did. And um, yeah, I, I got to know him in 2000, last year in, uh, when he was the mental skills guy in Arizona. Uh, sat down and got to talk to him a little bit. And uh, yeah, he's just a great, great person. I'm so happy for him and uh, his journey, you know, and, and I've learned a lot from him, and I hope he's learned something from me too. I took a quote from his article the other day and he said, I got baseball back when I finally didn't need it. Is it a similar situation to you? Um, you know, I think I always needed baseball. 
you know, and I, I think I hated baseball for a little while, but I think I always needed it. You know, baseball, it was, it was, I didn't like it for a while. And, um, I guess I knew I, I just wanted to know that when I was old, that I'd given everything to the game and that I could, I wouldn't look back and say, you know, I wish I'd done this or that or that. And, um, you know, I kind of just fought through that dislike of baseball and I've learned to love it again. And I honestly think I love it more now than I did in the past, just because I know how easily it can be taken away from you. 100%, 100%. Okay. Two more questions. One more. What comes to mind when I say the words Walt Weiss? Walt Weiss? Mm -hmm. He's just a great person. Honestly, I had him as a skipper in Colorado. He's a, a true, a true players manager and uh, just a great human being and just a great friend, honestly. And I know him as a person. I know he'd be he'd be enjoying what you're going through right now just as much as he is. Um, yeah, so, no, I know he's he's been by my side, and I, I I've loved all of the support he's been giving me. Fantastic. All right, that's all I got, buddy. That's uh, really appreciate your time. It was really good talking to you. I can't wait to see what you can do the rest of the year, man. Thank you very much.